Welcome, welcome to another installment of the Goddess Keys, where we unleash and unlock the tools and jewels to support us with our return back to sovereignty, back to consciousness freedom, because this is our birthright. And today we are doing an update on the Indigo Type 3 contracts. I've been getting so much response based upon the Indigo Type 3 contracts and this is just based upon some TikTok videos I did almost a year ago now and I definitely know that it's time for an update and so I am speaking to anybody who thinks that they are an indigo type 3 and essentially what this means is that you're housing at least one other consciousness within your body at this time and you're actually here to rehabilitate this consciousness which tends to be more of a fallen state or what they would call a fallen angelic or nephilim consciousness and you're here to support them with polarity integration so you you hold like a very high consciousness within you and then also a very lower consciousness so something about indigo type threes is this balance of non-duality and polarity integration and this is actually setting the forefront which leads us into unity consciousness christ consciousness and embodying the law of one as the earth continues to raise in frequency so i want to get a little bit more clear though on what this indigo type 3 contract can consist of and a possible path to to evolution outside of it and to become at one with this and a lot of times and i've totally been there of like you can sometimes think like this is a curse or like i want to get rid of this like i want to move on like this is dragging my life down this is dragging down what i'm here to do etc etc and a lot of that i think has been perpetuated within the the light worker community i'm always you're gonna always hear me talk about that like there's a lot of little ways in which like the quote-unquote starseed community light worker community can sometimes glaze over some some issues and i feel like um the ways that uh the very limited information on indigo type threes that's out there kind of like makes it seem as though being an indigo type three is a curse right and basically if if it, it's very hierarchical the way it's talked about so it's like indigo type threes are like in the army kind of they're like on the front lines like they're getting shot at like you know all that kind of stuff and then you got the indigo type three twos who have their like healing centers and stuff like that or you know um and they're kind of like more stable and then you have the indigo type ones the grid workers who are who are super evolved and like don't even know what a fallen angelic consciousness is i just feel like there's this really weird hierarchical stuff around uh, or language around around indigo type threes and i think it's coded in a way um i think that indigo type threes sometimes can be incarnated in bloodlines and lineages that have uh, seen a lot of oppression through negative polarity and that has a lot of cultural connotations it also has a lot of economic connotations and i might go into that a little bit more later but um I just want to say like I, I want to offer another perspective and also to to share that I think that in being an indigo type three is way more common than we might think. Um, and so what's the way we'll break down this particular segment is I'm going to share number one, another perspective around how someone might become an indigo type three, how this don't how this may not just impact you on an individual level sometimes being an indigo three seems like really individual and it's like you against the world kind of thing but i would like to share another perspective which would actually uh, show that this is a collective thing that we're all going through which i think is really supportive and affirming Um, and it helps to give us a little bit more of a roadmap and then i'm going to share some 
some tools that you could possibly u- utilize as you evolve out of this indigo type three dynamic. This is not a curse. This is not something that you're just supposed to live with. If you ever feel, and that's one thing I would say, if you ever feel like you're bound by something, that is a consciousness track trap that um, that needs to be evolved out of. Okay, and so I would also, I'm also going to share some ways in which the indigo type three contract and all that has been set up as a consciousness trap for individuals who do have highly evolved consciousnesses and are here to really activate some serious codes for the collective evolution of the planet. But like keeping them within this consciousness trap of being trapped by this fallen angelic consciousness is a way to essentially keep folks out of their power. All right. So we're going to share, I'll share some ways that we can transcend that a little bit and start reclaiming our power from the fallen angelic consciousness as well. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm reading a very, it's like an article that's about 10 years old. Um, It's called Magnum Opus from the Energetic Synthesis website. And it basically talks about this idea of like the extreme alchemy that we go through as we ascend in consciousness. And Lisa Renee 10 years ago talks about something that I think has become very apparent in today's times, but basically how, and it's something that, that we're probably aware of to some degree, that there, as the consciousness of the planet has been raising, there's been this like collapse of the lower dimensions, particularly the, the first dimension and the second dimension. So a lot of these like elemental realms, parallel realms, quote unquote, underworld or hell realms have been collapsing. And what's been happening is they've been seeping into the third dimensional consciousness because the energy has to go somewhere, right? And so now what we have is this weird dynamic of like basically body snatching scenarios. If you're not rooted in your soul, if you're not rooted in your higher self, it's really easy for beings and entities to hitch a ride in your vessel, right? Because they got to go somewhere. And, you know, I've mentioned this in some of my other content. There is this thing around like body snatching scenarios and like it is a privilege or it's a gift to be embodied. Embodiment is our way through ascension. And there are beings who want bodies, you know, like they don't want to, they don't want to be entities. They want to be able to be embodied too. So they will try to hitch a ride, right? And so that's a very real dynamic that um, is happening. And so um, let me see. So basically what Lisa Renee says is she says, it is purging the lower parts of infection, purging the darkness of the subconscious planes of the collective mind and of the planet itself. So with all of the subconscious mind suppression and the subconscious mind suppression is in the 1D, 2D realms, okay? So when we navigate the subconscious, we're going into 1D, 2D. We're going into the underworld. And so that's one thing. Polarity integrators kind of got to get comfortable with being in that underworld place. And the underworld isn't so dark. Like there is some darkness, but as you excavate, you'll find that there's gateway there's also a gateway to the cosmos and to ascension through the underworld too so that's something else to keep in mind and that and um so another thing that a lot of times will happen in this whole light worker community is they they make us think like ascension is going up moving up into the heavens uh that's a false ascension matrix like going up like going through that consciousness will keep you within some pretty uh, fall in timelines, actually. That's what's funny. So you, it, you have to remember, we're in an inverted system. So up is down and black is white. <laughs> okay. So a lot of stuff is opposite. All right. And so with that being said, um, yeah, you got to go through the hell realms and stuff to navigate the subconscious. But once you go through hell, heaven, you know, um, heaven is there. And so we actually are on an incension journey as opposed to an ascension journey. It's about going down into the deep, deep, dark depths 
to get to our soul essence okay so it's completely inverted right so you got to kind of turn things inside out and this is why i've created a new tier on my patreon called the galactic black rose doing this extreme shadow work that's going to be required for us to purge some of these consciousness out um, consciousnesses out alchemize some of these consciousnesses you know if we think about ourselves as polarity integrators right we got bl- so polarity what do we got black and white and so a lot of ways that uh, the human consciousness is currently being controlled right now is through this thing called the checkerboard matrix right so it's, it's either or it's this or that it's good or evil right and so this is a part of um a very big mind control program that keeps us from unifying okay um the alchemy process though has us go from black to gray to white okay but you can't get to the light without going through the dark black contains all colors okay it is all there is all right and so when we go into those dark shadow realms we are we are navigating through all that is and that could be some really cool stuff and that could be some really cringy stuff okay um and so the false ascension matrix though wants us to stay in the light that's where a lot of these false gods are that's where a lot of these fallen angelics are okay things are not as they appear all right and so that's why i've shared in previous recordings too around like use discernment with the archangels use discernment with like these a lot of these saints and stuff like that these really light filled personas really ask yourself where are these personas being projected from are they authentic just really making sure that you're testing for that because a lot of the false matrix is built upon veils of illusion okay so um with that being said um going back to what lisa marie says or uh, sorry lisa marie <laughs> lisa renee she, um she wrote the veils are gone in the collective consciousness layers so the fallen angelic fields from the inner planes are being absorbed into the auras of people on the earth's surface who are disconnected from their soul and monad matrix so it doesn't necessarily you know they're not just hitching rides with people who have indigo three contracts they're hitching rides with wherever they can fit in okay so that could be anybody all right that's not just light workers that's not just star seeds that's why we're seeing this phenomenon of like sometimes it feels like you'll see people but it doesn't really feel like anyone's home there you know what i mean um sometimes it's it's because of this kind of dynamic um let's see this is the same as saying that saying the disconnected earthlings are the fallen angelic collective in their subconscious mind the body of the individual human being that has the subconscious mind therefore frequency of thoughts of the fallen angelic field is being connected and absorbed into that field through their chakra system and hence is becoming absorbed into that consciousness field so this whole like fallen angelic consciousness thing is not just an indigo three thing um being an indigo type three is a little different because you're hosting a very high consciousness and this like fallen angelic consciousness um and so you're kind of like you know you have a soul you know you're you're connected to source right so you sometimes it feels like you're having this internal battle within there might be other people though who have the fallen angelic consciousness uh you know they have a fallen angelic hitch and a ride with them but it's really no difference than how their life was prior so they don't care they don't know so um that's the difference so you're not necessarily one in a million when it comes to like having these consciousnesses within you it's just that you are able to see a lot more clearly of what's oh what's going on and intuit this a lot more clearly okay um and another thing to know a really large download that i've gotten is around the lower chakras the solar plexus the sacral and the root chakra they're basically like the nephilim fallen angelic chakras these are your chakras that are very much related to survival consciousness scarcity consciousness duality polarity and they're being phased out so i did a 
I did a series on the chakras. I didn't go through all of them, um, but you'll, I have a playlist on them. If you haven't listened to them, I would check that out. And it really kind of lays out how each of these chakras a lot of times are used for energy harvesting schemes. And so one thing specifically, if you consider yourself an indigo type three, I would highly suggest phasing out of the traditional chakra system. Um, our ascension template doesn't really it's not really calling for the traditional solar plexus sacral or root chakra um even the colors that are coming on to planet earth um to support us with our ascension journey those colors are nowhere within the color spectrum okay so you know there's more peach now like we're not really seeing a lot of orange and we're not really seeing a lot of reds um same thing we're not really seeing as much violet coming from the the great central sun and the aurora which is coming from the core of the planet it's not coming from up above um we're seeing more lavender um we're seeing more pinks we're seeing more turquoise softer colors more pastel colors that sort of thing that's not to say that you know you you throw out utilizing any of those other colors with the chakra template, but I would consider it like old technology. And sometimes we just need upgrades, right? Um, as we move into this new age, then we we need new templates, right? So considering it that way, and um, you know, it it might benefit you to stop doing chakra work, <laughs> actually. And I'll be sharing more content around this, but. Um, these are energy harvesting stations. These have been used to keep the fallen angelic consciousness churning. And so it might behoove you to start really considering activating a pillar of light within your vertical channels and revoking any vows, oaths, and agreements to the chakra energy harvesting systems. Even when you see some of the diagrams of what the chakras look like, they have these like weird cones attached to them, which to me just look like ways to energy harvest even like the way the cones look it's like oh so what you can siphon energy better um it just looks really barbaric in a lot of ways and so um if you are an indigo type three and this is something that you're looking to transition out of like start with your chakras start with cultivating the pillar of light and it makes sense pillar of light is one it's a unified field and we're moving into unity and that's one thing that you're doing as an indigo type three is you are unifying you're unifying polarity why would you need to have these separate spheres everywhere like why not embody the uni unified field so that's one piece of advice that i would share that i think would be really supportive especially as it relates to those lower survival type chakras okay um let's see it says as the individual human absorbs the fallen layers it brings that elemental force and its consciousness into the physical realm which has two main impacts first this is very good because the fallen angelic elemental field and its thought forms are being forcibly elevated so that its collective consciousness can be moved evicted and rehabilitated once it enters a 3d human body so you are a portal Okay, you are a portal when you are like, regardless of whether or not you're conscious of it or not, like you are a portal, like sometimes you're like the transit station, you're the transit hub. And being able to honor this and own this and hone your gifts as it relates to this will support and coming for, at this from a service to others standpoint, because it's actually kind of beautiful. I mean, it's, it's very annoying in a lot of ways, I get it. But it's kind of beautiful in a way because in this ascension journey, every being is ascending. Every being has an opportunity to, to continue on in their journey in a more evolved way, okay? And so a fallen angelic consciousness's evolution, though, is going to look a lot different than another type of consciousness's evolution. But everybody gets the chance to evolve here, okay? Um, and you are that bridge, to supporting them with evolving so in that way it's kind of cool right but as lisa renee says the challenging aspect of this is that many unaware humans such as humans with primitive consciousness or traumatized and abused consciousnesses will wrap will be radically impacted at the, as this fallen angelic force is amplified considerably in their individual experience in whatever they believe is the ego self 
The biggest piece to understand is that no matter where we exist in our personal consciousness on this earth, we are moving from an individual consciousness to a group consciousness, and that vibration will be matched to every individual aura, okay? So this is where some of the communication breakdown is coming about. Like uh, in the recent years, we've seen a lot of friend groups shift. We've seen a lot of connection to family groups shift. We've seen, you know, people who, there's been folks who just had to literally change their whole lives because they woke up and they realized like, I want to evolve. I am ready to expand in consciousness. And then there's others that are like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I don't like, I don't want to, I don't even know what to expand to, you know? So there's this thing that they're calling called a bifurcation that's happening. It's this timeline split as well. Um, and so people are deciding, everybody has the free will choice to decide whether or not they're going to ascend um, or how, I should say, how they ascend. Ascension is something that is going to happen in one way or another, whether it's on this planet or off, but it will, it will be based upon each being's uh, selection process. So there's a lot of ways that this is happening, but you know, not everyone on planet earth is choosing the incension path, right? If you're listening to this con content, I'm pretty sure that you are most likely delving into this incension path. Okay. But that this is, um, it's a, it's a challenge and this, you're a path, you're a path cutter, you know, you're, you're paving the way to make it a lot easier for, um, the collective to ascend. Right. Um, and so here are some of the suggestions though, to support with your incension journey as an indigo type three, okay? So there's some ways in which you're gonna be the most impacted, um, you're gonna find the most stumbling blocks, I would say, with your ascension or incension journey as it relates to um, hosting a fallen angelic consciousness. So one thing is it's you embodying divine union. And this goes outside of this whole twin flame program that we have going on right now. Um, this is like really embodying divine union from within, um, divine union with your inner mother, with your inner father, with your inner child, okay? And, and the, the sacred marriage of that coming together from within. This is also gonna require um, healing a blocked heart chakra. And this is a lot of times going to, you'll know if you have a blocked heart, heart chakra, if you are experiencing dynamics related to dramatic actor or actress, performer, perfunctory, keeping appearances, or being a playboy or a playgirl. That's some of the ways that a blocked heart chakra will manifest. Some people are dealing with having a too open heart chakra that could manifest in being really hypersensitive, too empathic, sensory overload, people, people pleaser, overwhelmed, escapist. Um, we really want to embody something called a tri-wave frequency. Uh, so moving out of this whole polarity consciousness of black or white, this or that, either or. Tri-wave um, is that embodiment of the father, mother, and child kind of thing. Or father, what is it? Um, you know, the, the threefold path okay and so that's unconditional love for self and others balanced mind and heart discernment self and self-esteem and feeling connected okay and uh you'll also need to integrate fear thought forms um having an absence of warmth warmth feeling unconfident not being able to forgive feeling distrustful, suspicious, being manipulative. This is something that we definitely have to contend with as indigo type threes, because, you know, if you're, har if you're harboring two, at least two consciousnesses, that's another thing. You could have a lot more than that, but that's a, that's for another time. Um, you, your mind can sometimes feel like a battleground, right? And so how does that manifest in, in the outside? And I think a big foundational step is embodying forgiveness. And, you know, we think we forgive, um, you know, we, we might have suffered like some kind of an injustice and we think we've forgiven that, that person or that event. 
But until we actually heal or forgive the root cause of that injustice, we haven't forgiven. And then it's really difficult to clear the karma for that. So embodying forgiveness and that path of forgiveness is a huge thing for indigo type threes, okay? Um, and that's going to really support with the level up. I, I call it the forgiveness level up because it's like when we're able to embody forgiveness at a cellular level, when we're able to embody love at a cellular level, it's a game changer. But there's been a lot of illusions, veils, obstructions, which have number one, kept us on a hamster wheel of trauma, making it really difficult to get to the root cause of trauma because the controllers of the false matrix, they know that. They know that um, you know a lot of their stuff is built upon illusion and um, manipulation, right? And so it's like, if you pierce through the veil of that and you heal that at the root, then it's like, what do they have? What do they have to hold you, right? So it's seeing past the illusion. I'm going to share some other tools in a moment around how to do that. Um, It's also about healing soul woundedness, healing soul abuse, healing soul trauma, healing soul shock, healing soul devastation. A lot of folks who have indigo type three contracts have been on planet Earth many, 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 many times and have a, have a long history they, they have a long record of things that they've seen they've witnessed they've experienced and with that there's been a lot of soul fracturing that needs to be uh rehabilitated okay and so moving forward there is a very intensive multi-dimensional healing journey for indigo type threes which will include multi-dimensional inner child healing and this means looking not just at your inner child but your inner children. And I I have a video that I just posted on this around uh, multi-dimensional inner child healing. And on the black rose tier, the galactic black rose tier on Patreon, I'm releasing, uh, I'm pre-releasing the the coursework that I'm providing on healing the inner family. So it's, I'm going to be selling it as a course, but I want to provide it as an offering, like at a lower cost to, um, folks that have been subscribing and all that sort of stuff and who are following on Patreon and who could utilize this information. I'm kind of taking what is called like a DIY shamanist, a shamanism approach. (laughs) Um, You know, it would be great to like be able to go into the rainforest and like go visit a shaman and like have the transcendental experience and take off all that time to do that and travel and everything. But in this you know, in this time matrix that we're in, sometimes that's not possible. So um, the meditations that I create is like a DIY shamanism experience, like um, having this experience where you're doing soul retrieval and stuff within the comfort of your home and, and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, it's accompanied by the meditation with some, some questions for processing and some um, decrees to do some, to revoke soul contracts, you know? And so, but it's, I really am passionate about empowering folks to do this process on their own, but to also streamline it for them, um, because it can be overwhelming. So I'll be releasing, I just released one, um, meditation around healing the inner family, but I'm going to also be soon releasing the, um, next portion, which is around healing the, inner parents or meeting the inner parents. And then we're going to be moving on to healing literally each inner part of your inner child from zero to 18. And then there's going to be a whole, like there's all, there's a whole other segment on healing your inner adult. And it's like doing this soul retrieval year by year. Um, so I packaged that for the collective cause I, I, I'm being called to share this offering because I know it's needed at this time. Um, so yeah, that will be on the Black Rose Patreon, um, if you're interested. Along with that parallel life integration, we have like 24, from what I'm learning, we have about like 24 possible parallel lives within, uh, this universal time matrix. And, uh, you know, we've been many, many different things. So it's like, it's very likely that the thing that we judge the most in our life right now, we are acting that out 
in a parallel life or else it wouldn't be showing up in our reality and sometimes we get gaslit in the false matrix because it's like they're like oh yeah you create your reality and but it's like we're in this linear time frame so we don't understand how that's possible once we start doing parallel life integration that stuff makes sense okay um you can also learn more about this on uh, the Aligning with Earth curriculum, which is free. And um, I've been doing some really deep dive studying with this curriculum, as well as pulling other resources um, from you know my energy healing, shamanism, hypnosis background, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm kind of taking it to the next level by packaging out this DIY shamanism stuff um, so that we can get through these really, really deep, profound healings in a way that's a little bit streamlined um, so that we can um, embody our highest vibrational time spiral. I'm not even saying timeline anymore. I'm moving into the time spiral. Um, another thing that you want to do, though, as an indigo type three is you want to maintain order in the Akashic Records. So I also have a meditation that's coming out soon um, around revoking some of these Nephilim contracts first of all seeing the nephilim contracts that are running which ones can be released which ones might need some more support regarding forgiveness around um and you'll be surprised how many um how many uh nephilim contracts you might have running around um in your akashic records and sometimes like a lot of this stuff is bs and it's just being you know manipulated and all that sort of stuff so it's doing the work around um returning the false karma and you know finding out where the bs contracts are and making them null and void and then it's also about moving beyond the akashic record so i just posted a short on my youtube um and on tiktok just around like how you know it's time to start looking through your akashic records or accessing your akashic records and i do think it's really important to access your akashic records but there's a lot of bs that's happening in the akashic records right now and it has been for a really long time. It's very lawless. It's not a lot of times not connected to universal law. And so sometimes you have to go through the Akashic records and see that for yourself and seeing how that's playing out in your particular reality. It's very enlightening. And, you know, I have some meditations where we're going deep into that um, on Patreon. And um, but we want to evolve past the Akashic records and go into something called the Universal Hall of Records, which is a lot more orderly, which is a lot more expansive. And um, it's just like more upgraded, like the way it's shown to me, it's like the Akashic Records looks like a 1970s like um, police office filing room. And like the Universal Hall of Records looks like some futuristic, like cool holographic stuff going on you know so it's the it, it is about uh elevating your consciousness so that you're you're accessing the universal hall of records and that leads me to the next piece of advice i have for indigo type threes removing the etheric implants all that ai weaponry and technology i'm not saying you're going to be able to just clear everything in one go a lot sometimes like this ai stuff is like running um it's not even in our etheric field it's like in the sound fields or like there's frequency fences around the planet which are currently being taken down so some of the some of the stuff is really big right so it's not to say like you'll be etheric implant free but there are some things that you can start monitoring for clearing within your own fields and i i have resources for that and i'll be expanding upon that as well on patreon um just so you can start clearing make it doing these clearings yourself right um moving past going to healers to, to do this stuff and like starting to be masters of your own energetic field and that's what this whole diy shamanism thing that i got going on is all about is to like support folks with that who are ready to take this next step and um, the next thing you want to do is work with the healing temples of ascension so if you want to learn more about this go to aligningwithearth.com type in healing temples of ascension i might be doing more content about this down the line um i have a lot of stuff on patreon as it relates to this um yeah but um you definitely want to be also uh programming your dream time to be healing in these healing temples a lot of times you got to make sure you have access to these healing temples a lot of times your access has been revoked because of 
BS that's been going on in your Akashic records or in the astrals. So um, you can learn more about that on Aligning with Earth. Um, but yeah, those are some of the ways it's, it's a deep dive. I just mean, I know I just mentioned a lot of stuff. Um, that's why I'm like creating this DIY shamanism library to support folks with this and, uh, just hacking through that subconscious mind. Um, and then focusing in on forgiveness, really, really focusing in on forgiveness, embodying forgiveness at a cellular level. Um, you'll be surprised where non-forgiveness was recorded in your cells. Um, these are events that you're not going to learn about in history books and, and things like that. Um, but there are resources out there and I am supporting people with that as well. So I hope that this was, uh, insightful and useful for you. I'm going to be doing more content as it kind of relates to this, but I'm specifically talking to folks who know that they're indigo type threes and are feeling really overwhelmed and stressed out about it. Um, just know that you're not alone in this. A lot of people are dealing with this right now. It's just that you have the consciousness to want something better or more evolved, right? Um, or more joy filled, liberated existence. Okay. That's the difference, but this is actually way more common than, um, I personally thought, um, So yeah, uh, sending you so much love, joy, peace, prosperity, and abundance until we meet again.